Welcome to Scratch Lesson 6, Music and Animation. In this lesson you're going to learn how to create a very simple sprite and change the number of costumes for it so it looks like it's doing some basic movements. And we're going to set those movements to uh, music so it looks like our sprite is kind of dancing. Now I've already gone through the effort of making several costumes for this simple stickman sprite that I've put on the screen. Uh, everybody can probably do a stickman sprite so that's why I did this because your animation skills and your artistic skills I'm sure will exceed mine. So just to show you how I created different uh, versions of this costume, I'm going to do one more costume here. I'm going to take my original costume that I created at the very top, this costume one. I'm going to right click and duplicate it. It shows up at the bottom of my screen called costume nine. And like I did on costume six where I had his little foot lift up and come back down, I'm going to do the same thing on my last costume just to show you what I did. So I have this selection window or the selection feature uh, selected in the costume editor. I come over here and I simply select his foot with it, and just his foot, and then I'm going to move it so it looks like he's tapping his foot, lift, rotate it using this rotation feature and grab it in the middle here and when my arrow turns to a hand I can move it around and I'm going to move it so his foot is sitting right about there and then it looks like he's lifting his his right foot or our left foot depending on the angle we're looking at so I basically did the same thing with all the different costumes where I got him to move his arm up or lift his leg up and move things around there's also this interesting feature where you can click on the sprite, select him, and then you can choose this flip feature up here in the top right of your screen. You can flip the sprite um, about the vertical axis, or you can flip him about his horizontal axis. So that's what you can do when you duplicate him. You can simply copy and paste and then flip him around. So I'm going to leave him like this, but I am going to make sure he's centered properly. All the sprites have been centered at their waist. So if you go to any of these sprites here and you look at the, f the center feature, their waists are centered in all the cases. So that makes it look like the sprite is dancing in one spot instead of uh, jumping around as he's dancing, which you might want to do, but we're not going to do in our case. So now that we have the sprite ready to go, and you notice the costumes are called costume 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, all the way up to 9. Um, it's not very imaginative, but it works just fine for us. So we'll go back to our script, and we're going to have an event kick things off. When it's clicked, we're going to have it um, select a beat, and our dancer is going to dance to a certain beat. So I'm going to create a data a variable called beat. And this beat will be the delay, in essence, uh, how long it takes before we switch to another costume. So we'll do it for simply this sprite. We'll click OK and we'll start by setting the beat to 0.5 seconds. Obviously we can change this later if we need to. We're also going to have it so that when we press the D key the sprite will start to dance. So there's D and we're going to have it do this forever. So we'll go into our control statements and choose forever and have them dance. Now what we want to do we could either have it so we make our costume go through a sequence of moves where in each different costume he has a slight change in motion and once you run it at full speed it looks like he moves smoothly. That's a possibility. But for uh, to make it look like he's kind of dancing and kind of mixing up his moves, we're going to randomly pick costumes to display so that he's kind of making different moves and none of them are following a scripted pattern. To do that we're going to use this pick random number block which can be chosen to choose random numbers between 0 and pretty much anything you want or one and in our case eight. Oh, actually sorry I think we had as many as nine costumes. I'll put nine in and I'll check to see how many costumes we had. We have nine costumes so we're going to choose to make it a random number generator that chooses between one and nine. Now we're going to have it do that and I'm going to make a variable called number which will become more obvious as we go through this but this number variable will actually keep track or be assigned the value that was chosen by this random number generator. So we'll do it for this sprite only. And we're going to set the number to whatever random number is picked. So this number could be now a value between 1 and 9. 
Then we're going to use if statements and a series of if statements where if the random number is equal to the costume or if the number is equal to 1 for example then we're going to change it to costume 1. So we're going to go to looks and switch to costume 1. And of course I'm going to duplicate this code and if the number is 2 we're going to switch to costume 2 and so on. So I'll just continue to do this here. And by the way I'm going to show you something interesting. I can actually duplicate a whole chunk of code. Anything that falls beneath where I click and I duplicate will now be duplicated. So I just did three more blocks. It makes things a little more easy to duplicate. This will be four. This will be five. This will be six. And we better make sure our costume change accordingly. Oh, you notice that I pressed on it so now he's kind of twitching and jumping all over the place. We're going to stop that in a second because it's not fun to watch that. And we're going to do two more costumes, so we'll just get this finished here. Seven, actually probably three more. I keep thinking we have eight costumes, but we actually have nine. So this will be costume seven, whoops, six to eight. And one more. Squeeze them back down here. Make it nine. And costume nine. So when we uh, click the D key, he's going to go at the, or the uh, computer will choose a random number between 1 and 9, assign it to the number variable, then check to see if the number is 1. Well, if the random number generator picks 2, for example, this will be false, so it will pass over this if statement, go to the next one. This will now be true, number will be 2, so it will switch to costume 2. And it actually checks the rest of them, because it's a computer, it's not that smart. And it will go down to the end, of course, jumping past each if statement, come back and set a new random number. The problem is it does this incredibly fast, and we want it to match the beat of the music. So we're going to go and put a wait statement at the bottom, but we're going to wait beat number of seconds. So that will be what we've chosen here. So when I press the D key now, he'll start dancing like crazy, uh, going super fast here. And I'm not sure exactly why, because it should have been much slower than that. There we go. I just didn't reset. So now he's going at every half second, he's changing his motion. You might notice, though, that occasionally he looks to pause, like he just did here a minute ago, and again right here. The reason he's doing that is because the random number generator is picking the same number twice. So the costume is actually sitting there for two beats instead of moving to another costume which we wanted to do. We're going to fix that problem in a minute but first we're actually going to import some music. So for this particular uh, program I want to choose a piece of music that uh, we're going to import or we're going to create a new one so go to sounds and we're going to choose a piece of music from our library so we click um, the folder feature and I'm going to go to my desktop and choose Heavy D and the Boys Now That We Found Love. We're going to open it. The Scratch Editor will take a second or two to convert it and compress this MP3 file so that it fits and it takes up the least amount of room. It also uh, embeds the sound file in the application or in your program so you don't actually have to carry the sound file in the same folder if you move this application to somewhere else. It's all in one. so. I'm just going to let this thing continue to do this and then we're going to uh, I'll, sh I'll show you the music and we can make him dance to it and finally we'll make him so that he doesn't repeat any of his dance moves. Once you see how we do this you can go and do try it yourself and using your imagination and creativity and with patience you can create a sprite that has very fluid motion and appears to dance much better than mine will but you'll see for yourself. Okay so here we have the sound here we have the uh, music. I'm just going to play it for you here. Okay, so there it comes in. And you can see it right now. So you might notice that this shows you the sound waves and it shows you the beats on here. The beats are obviously quite obvious to see as peaks in this uh, waveform. 
what I did is I would simply take a stopwatch, play it and count how many beats occurred, maybe 30 seconds, and then take that number and divide by 30 and that would give me my beat interval that I've used in my script right here uh, when I choose it on my screen. So I've chosen point, chosen point 0.5 which isn't far off the beats that are in this music. So it has a beat approximately half a every half a second. I didn't do it perfectly but you can uh, you can modify that when you're programming. So back to the scripts now and I'll just play it here and you can hear it, the sound and watch him dance and you can see it it doesn't look too bad. So here I go I make him start to dance to the music actually he's not dancing to the music at all because I forgot to actually import the sound. So I actually got to play the sound when uh, I start this music. There we go. We'll try this one more time. And when I press the D key, I'm going to get him to dance. There we go. Okay, and so the only problem we still have to work out here is the one last thing where he doesn't repeat his um, costume selection. So we're going to go to the data and we're going to make another variable and this is going to be called previous. It's going to represent the previous number that the random number that the random number generator created. So previous will be for the sprite only and there it is. And after it's chosen a number and it picked the costume, at the bottom here we're going to set the previous to whatever number was. So now it's holding the value that number currently is. So if the random number generator picked 2, it'll choose costume 2, come down to the bottom, and this previous variable will now take on the value 2. When it comes back up, it's going to choose a new number, but the number that it chooses maybe is 3, previous will still be 2. Or actually, let's say it chooses number 2 again. So now it's picked the same number twice. I have to make sure that it doesn't do that. So I'm going to go to control statement use this repeat until and I'm going to squeeze the repeat until right into here where, right after we set the number. So repeat until the number we pick is not equal to previous. That means I have to go to my operators and choose this not statement because we want to make sure we're going to continue to pick a random number until it is not the previous number. So I'm going to go back to my variables, actually go to equal sign. So this means not equal to. So we want to make sure that the previous number, or the number we picked, is not equal to the previous number that was in there before. If it is, then we have to, in essence, choose a new random number. So I'm going to put this set number in here to pick another number between 1 and 9. Now there's nothing stopping it from picking 2 a third time but it will come back up here and it will see that number is still equal to previous and it will jump back in and we're just kind of using the brute force approach and we know that it will pick a random number so quickly that it won't even seem to skip a beat and it will finally pick a number that's not the same as previous and come back out and do this code. So that's the intention. Let's um, try this and see if it works. So I'm going to press start. The music should start to play and I'll press D to make the man dance. So the man should not be repeating any of his costume moves, and it doesn't look like he is. Okay, and as you can see, he's only moving a few simple different costumes. And I'll leave it to you to choose and make many different costumes to make your animation smoother. Of course, as the man's dancing, you can still have many other um, code fragments or code pieces here that make them move around the screen or make the background change or do whatever you'd like with it. So thank you for watching and uh, tune in next time for the next Scratch lesson.